Welcome to episode one of a new series called The Staples. This series is all about teaching you how to make the building blocks of good cooking. If we're keeping it real, growing up I was always that weird kid who liked mustard a lot more than ketchup. I really did dread that neon red sugar paste and wondered why people would drown a perfectly good basket of fries in the stuff. Now to this day you're probably not going to catch me squeezing the commercial stuff all over my fries, burger, dog, whatever. But this umami rich, tangy, semi-sweet, homemade version, that's a different story. These are the world famous San Marzano tomatoes. Well, at least they're famous in the food world. These tomatoes are picked at the peak of the season, peeled and canned whole. Tomato season is short and using San Marzano tomatoes is a great way to ensure a high quality end result all year long, so I like to use them in my ketchup. If you have access to solid in-season tomatoes, you can peel and use those instead. To make sure we get every last bit of mater, use the water in the recipe to rinse out your cans for that sweet, sweet tomato juice. No soldiers left behind. In a large, wide Dutch oven or similar vessel, dump the two cans of tomatoes, one cup of water, half a teaspoon of both onion and garlic powder, then a pinch of salt. Now you're gonna wanna season lightly here because there's gonna be a lot of different ways that we're going to pump salinity into the ketchup. I mean, we got some salt. We're gonna use some of this here fine Worcestershire Minder burger sauce, um, sort of like an English fish sauce, if you will, made with fermented anchovies. And then of course, or MSG. Do not fear MSG. Monosodium glutamate is just glutamic acid attached to a salt. It is a harmless compound found all throughout nature from mushrooms to breast milk and it makes the ketchup really really good. So in with a teaspoon of that followed by a cup of good old white distilled vinegar. Give the tomatoes a nice mashy mashy by hand. I like to do this before reducing to make sure all the juices are dispersed evenly in the pot. So I just mentioned reduction. In my testing, I found that my best ketchup came from a slow cooking process. I tried a quicker method using tomato paste and I so badly wanted it to work, but the truth is nothing beats the roasty, rich, umami-packed flavors generated from a slow reduction process. The ketchup needs a total of three hours to reduce down, but check on it at the halfway mark to make sure things aren't burning. The tomato tends to cake on the sidewalls of the pot as it cooks, so go ahead and hit that down with a spatula, then pop it back in the ovo to finish. At the three hour mark, the chunky ketchup mixture should be reduced to nearly a paste. You'll know that things are going well if your ketchup looks like this. There should be almost no liquid and the tomato should be thick. If it looks a little wet, continue reducing in the oven and check back in 20 minute increments until you get a consistency like this. The tomato should fall from the spoon in clumps with no liquid dripping. Let the mixture cool to room temperature, then transfer it to a blender and puree until silky smooth. At this point, the mixture is smooth, but there are still some tomato seeds floating around, so pass the puree through a mesh strainer. It doesn't have to be too, too fine, just enough to catch the seeds. I would not recommend skipping this step. You don't want a gritty ketchup. You want it to be nice and smooth. After straining, it's on to final seasoning, and as a rule of thumb, food served cold needs more salt than hot food. Dang it, boy. This means that it's important that the ketchup is at room temperature, or better yet, slightly chilled before seasoning it to taste. And I know this sounds insane at first, but fish sauce and tomato sauce of all kinds play well together. Add a teaspoon of fish sauce, taste it, then finish seasoning with kosher salt, and be careful with the fish sauce. If you can taste it in the ketchup, then you've added too much. The fish sauce adds even more umami to this already umami-packed parte. Store the ketchup in a mason jar, deli container, or if you have it, a squeeze bottle, or a rinse out sriracha bottle. Mm. Yeah. When that's chilled down, it's going to be If done right, the final texture of the ketchup should be smooth, glossy, and perfectly viscous. You should be able to draw a weird eye thing on a plate and it should hold its shape for a little bit before weeping out onto the plate. <laughs> uh, or, you know, just eat it so you don't have to awkwardly laugh to yourself after a bad joke, either one. I need a dog. No, I need a boy gun. No, I need flies. No, I need eggs. No, I need... What do people eat ketchup on? Literally everything. My grandpa, my grandpa literally eats ketchup on every single thing. Call the camera. My grandpa literally eats ketchup on every single thing. 